Then he says this in verse 7. But I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. Now, Jesus said some um, profound things, many profound things. I mean, in his messages and his parables and his talks, no other human being that's ever walked this planet has more recorded words and, and more people remembering and quoting what he said and repeating his speeches and all the rest of it. Jesus had profound things. I mean, a lot of the sayings that we have still today, 2,000 years later, guess where they came from? Jesus had some profound things to say, but this in my opinion, is his most profound thing he's ever said. Jesus told his disciples, think about this, Jesus told his disciples that it's to their advantage that he not be with them. To which, to which I'm thinking they're, they're probably going not to our advantage. They had a major advantage of Jesus with them. Don't you think? I mean, think about it. They went through a storm that was so bad they were afraid for their lives. This wasn't a, they, these guys weren't amateur sailors. They grew up on the water. Their, their dads were fishermen. They were fishermen. These guys knew the water. They, knew, they've been, they know how to operate boats and how to operate storms. They were afraid for their lives, meaning this is a storm that was threatening their very lives. And in the midst of that, Jesus, they wake Jesus up. He, I picture this as he just grumpily, just like irritated, just kind of walks by. You guys woke me up gets to the edge of the boat. He's like, peace, <laughs> be still. And everything calms down and he looks around at them and goes, where's your faith? And they're just like. Yeah, they had an advantage of Jesus being their best friend. When one of them dies, four days later, Jesus is like, Lazarus, come out. He walks out. When they got sick, when Peter's mother-in-law got sick, Jesus, talk about marriage help. Like, like whatever your situation, Jesus was there. And now he's saying to them, it's to your advantage that I'm not with you. To which they're looking around and going, it, it doesn't get any better. Like, what are you talking about? They didn't understand then, but here's the thing. I don't think we understand now. Because what Jesus is, Jesus is not just saying this to them. Jesus is saying this to us now today. He's saying, it is better, think about this. It is better that we have the Holy Spirit in us than if Jesus were sitting here on the front row in church right now today attending our church. It's better. Think about that. It's better, it's to our advantage that Jesus is not here physically in the room, but that we have the Holy Spirit. Do you think we underestimate the Holy Spirit? And I'm thinking, I do. And I, I read this, I was like, it's to, it's to our advantage. Wow. And then he says, For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Then he says, verse 12, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. I hate that when people say that. It just irritates me. People are like, I got so much to say. I just, I just can't tell you now. You're not ready for it. What do I think about for the rest? Like, what am I not ready for? Like, like what do you, what do you got to say? Like, what else do you want to know? I'd, like, I'd be, I'd be like, it was, this would drive me crazy. I guarantee you this drove Peter crazy. Like, what, what else do you got? Like, Jesus, like, what do you mean we're not ready? We've been with you for three years. Like, you've already sent us out. We've already healed. Like, you've seen us. Like, what do you mean we're not ready? And Jesus knew you're not ready. How did, how did we know that they weren't ready? Because this night... Right after this three-chapter, four-chapter pep talk, what happens? Jesus gets arrested, and what happens to these guys? <laughs> he says, these things I tell you so that you will not stumble. How long did that last? It didn't even last the hour. Come on. Come on. Before we laugh at them, how many of you, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit this week. How many of you had a week? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you've had a week. And how many of us, me included, tried solving that problem on our own and then went, oh, wait. 
Remember we just preached about it last week, and we can't even get through a week. The disciples couldn't get through an hour. Like, help me, Jesus. <laughs> then he says this, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Hears from the Father, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. This is what I was talking about last week, is that this is the promise Jesus gave us about the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit, this is our advantage, 